Okay, well, thanks again for the fantastic timing here. Um, so, uh, last but not least, uh, Richard Francis, principal for the Mono Moy Company. Thanks very much. Okay. I, um, I do have some slides. I'm going to pop that there. Can everybody hear me okay? Is that fine? Good. Well, first of all, um, thank you to Saint Gauvin for hosting us this evening. Uh, thank you to Marcella and fellow panelists. And Thank you all. You have a choice at the end of the day to come to something like this or to go home. And uh, so I'm very grateful that you made the decision that I often don't make. Um, I've got a couple of slides. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gamble through them very quickly because I'm, I'm quite interested in, in the discussion part of this and I want to make sure that we have enough time. And I was also reading something interesting over the weekend which said if you want to communicate to the next generation of uh, building users or workers, uh, you should be able to do it in one picture and five words. And anything longer than that, they're lost. Well, I'm not of that generation, and I think most of you aren't as well, so I've got a few more than that. But I've done some thinking around this, and I think this is why this is different. I think this is why health and well-being resonates in a way that energy efficiency, as you've heard here tonight, doesn't. And I'll give them to you quickly. First, more. More health, more well-being, more productivity, not less energy. Now, for you, now. Not future generations, now. Me. We always talk about health and well-being, we talk about its effect on society. You want to get people to act, make this agenda personal. There's nothing more personal than somebody's health and well-being. It's accessible. Everybody understands this. Everybody has experience with being in an environment which is uncomfortable. You don't need an expert, as you do in energy efficiency, to tell you how well you're doing. And the last part of this is value, which is where I want to start with on my first slide. If I had one picture, this is the one I would begin with. And this is not quite right for tonight. This is a, an initiative that Sangoban is supporting through the World Green Building Council called the Better Places for Better, excuse me, Better Places for People campaign, and they've been very active in this. And this happens to be the retail metrics slide. Those of you who are familiar with the report will know that it looks exactly like the offices report. And although we haven't yet started the residential part of this, I can tell you that it's going to look a lot like this. Okay. And essentially, the way that you communicate the value proposition of health and well-being is by starting with the starting with the far end of the side first. Is it more valuable to have a healthy home? Is it more valuable to have a healthy office? Will people be performing better? Will they want it? Will it sell? Now, residential is a bit difficult on this one, but I can tell you in offices and in retail, the answer to that is affirmatively yes. Office workers, customers who like the environment, have a better experience, work better, spend more money, I think we'll see something very similar like this in residential. When we were doing the report last year, we were watching what's happening outside the building industry. If, if you're like me, it's always good to see where is this coming from, okay? And, you know, when you do a little bit of research, I'm going to go through some slides very, very quickly, you realize actually that wellness and health and well-being well are coming to the building industry, whether the building industry likes it or not. And you better understand it, and you better get out in front of it, because all the innovation is happening out there, but it's becoming geared more and more towards the residential market, as I'll talk about in just a second. So when we started the report for the World Green Building Council on offices uh, last year, we were in 2014 and we saw this. And this, is, this to me is, is indicative. If you go back and you look at the numbers, these projections are about right a year and a half on. There is a major fundamental force for individuals to want to quantify and understand their experience. And we know that it's a very, very short leap from saying, from people knowing what they put in their body to how they feel, to what people have around their body and increasingly in their body from the environments that they're in, they're beginning to make this connection. Big data. And we were talking about this a little bit before. That this, I, I like to show this side because 10 years ago I worked in outdoor air quality. <clears throat> and I think there are parallels with indoor environment that are coming fast and coming, and people who are in the industry need to understand these. So 10 years ago, it was a very expensive piece of equipment that was on top of a very tall pole that got hit by lightning and it had birds nesting in it. Requ it was very expensive. It required an expert to, to interpolate the data. And by the time you got the data, it was six months old. Come forward, 10 years, tops. This is data, and, this, and any major city in the world has this kind of data being provided by people largely riding to and from work on their bikes with a wearable device that uploads the air quality in real time 
on a map like this. Now, this is an interesting one, but this still has the problem of it's a collective action problem because nobody owns all of London, okay? So it's a very difficult problem, you can see it, very difficult to act. Now put yourself in the position of scanning down on this and moving these data points 15 feet from the curb to inside buildings and then start drawing blueprints around it. And all of a sudden, you've got the ability to look at assets if you've got the technology which exists for outdoor air, for indoor air. That technology exists, and here it is. And it's in buildings not far from here. And we're working on it actively. So this is a cube sensor. Interestingly enough, this is an indoor environmental quality monitor. Measures for individuals, temperature, daylight, VOCs, pressure, humidity. Now the interesting story about, this is, there's nothing about a cube sensor which makes it particularly interesting. One of the first to come to the market, there are a lot more now. The interesting bit about this is Cube Sensor and the other ones like Natapmo and Alima bypassed the commercial residential, excuse me, bypassed the commercial real estate industry and went directly into homes. So this is a product which is geared towards residences. Tells me something very, very interesting right at the start. Number one, people get it. People understand it. They can make sense of this. There's a little bit of a revolution going on in sustainability where it's now being led by the crowd. It's ordinary individuals who have access to data which a couple of years ago was impossible for them to make sense of. So if you want to start talking about air quality five years ago, how in the world would you know what the air quality was in your house? I mean, it might be good or it might be bad. Now you can put a number on it. And people are. So what you hear, have here is a map of London, which looks a little bit like the map I just showed you around outdoor air quality, where each one of those circles represents a building where one of these sensors is in place. Okay, so you want to go home, type in cube sensor, type in world map, get the app, go in, and you'll see, as I can do, what the indoor environmental qualities are in my neighbors at home. Or you could do it to any one of these. Now that's interesting because not only is the information available to individual homeowners, with the flip of a switch, that information is available to everyone. Okay? These do not require occupants, do not require res in the commercial market to tap into landlord services. All of a sudden, you've got the equivalent of a very cheap, effective post-occupancy evaluation, which is telling the entire world about the quality of your building in the area where it matters. Never mind energy. <clears throat> You're not going to get people to make decisions on that. We, we know that. In fact, one of the reasons why we're trying to make a business case around some of these other items is because they matter much more to people. And it's not just the physical measurements. This is, happens to be an, uh, an app called Poppy by Gensler. There are mappiness, any number of these. Go online, look at the effect of social media, go into a shopping center, which is what we're doing now, and you type in fresh, <clears throat> noisy, light, and you will be able to begin through Twitter and TripAdvisor and the rest of crowdsourced information about the perception of the place. You can begin to very, very quickly say, well, that's a good place to go and that's not a good place to go. Now, where's the opportunity in, in, in the residential market? Well, if I were selling my home, I would get one of these if I thought I had a good home. And instead of handing you an EPC at the time of signing, I'd hand you a spreadsheet. There will be, at some point, a value proposition behind that. Homes that are good for you will command a higher price. And those that don't will, will see the same kind of brown discount we see in other, other kinds of sustainability buildings. And you might say, well, okay, this is all quite fantastic. How many people are going to have these monitors? Don't need them. In the next generation of smartphones, think of what happens when a new operating system gets let go by Apple. What's the number one thing that they led with? A health and wellness app. Okay? And you think about a phone, everybody has it. <clears throat> I could do it right now, I could show you. I could show you the light levels in here, I could show you the temperature, I could show you the noise. Now these are not as good as the professional equipment, but a thousand pretty good ones, uploading data in real time will be better than one, which gives you the snapshot, and it'll be a lot less expensive. What does the phone do? A phone has a GPS, it has a camera, it has all these sensors. This, you know, when you, when you do due diligence or you do rent reviews, which is my background in this, this stuff is gold dust, and no one right now is using it properly. And at some point, everybody will have access to be able to see through your walls, into your buildings, into your residence, and to know whether that place is going to be good for them or not. What's it about? What's this technology about? It's about money. That's all it's about. 
If you can get the numbers right, you can get a better price. So what do we say to clients? So what, to, what would we say to people about sustainability? Health and well-being and the technology which accompanies it. It flips sustainability on its head. The way we, the way we think about sustainability now is a design rating conferred by experts at a point in time which everybody close to this knows runs downhill. So the performance of buildings is never, in terms of sustainability is probably never going to be better than it was at the time it gets its certification. We know that. Okay? The new sustainability, your sustainability credentials of your house, of your shop, of your office, will be displayed to everyone in real time by ordinary people using ordinary devices who are conferring your sustainability credentials in a much more meaningful way than it's ever been done before. And so hopefully people will begin to understand that. They'll understand the opportunity here. It's not just a risk. Most people think of this in terms of risk. There's a real opportunity here. No one that we've talked to so far has begun to market the space based on the proven, demonstrated, real-time health and wellness qualities of that space. The opportunity to take ownership over this and to make money out of it is right there. Thank you. <laughs>